Uh, hey, what's up, guys? So here we are getting ready to talk about image-based lighting and uh, and how we can set that up in Unity. And hey, surprise, we already have it set up. Uh, in other words, the scene that you're looking at here, it's a brand new scene. I just put in a, a, a sphere and a cube. You can see, uh, you know, just that's really it. It's set up and Unity by default now uses image-based lighting. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, one is there is a directional light, so let's turn that off uh, because we didn't have a directional light before. And so this is kind of what's looking. You can see that there's kind of an orange, darker orange color. This skybox right here is actually image base is, is actually the image based lighting, right? So if I go into my I'm going to go into my uh, materials and I've got the, uh, some others in here. So if I uh, let me grab this chrome, put it on here so you can see that that, that, that reflects perfectly the actual skybox and then this this is a perfect diffuse color if we look at this shader it's a, it's a hundred percent diffuse with no shininess no specular on it, no reflections on it uh, and we're going to also basically say we're going to turn the ambient gi to baked so we can get a little bit uh, baked on there we have to remember we got to take all of our objects and we got to make them static i have a drone object in here too that I'm going to show a little bit later, but we'll make those static. Uh, we got to go into our main camera and we got to turn it so that we want the rendering path to be deferred, if you recall. And then there's things like there's high quality GI that we might want uh, and some other things. In fact, if I do this, this, I'm going to basically use very high resolution for this, this light because we we'll, might turn that on later on. Okay, so I just, uh, I'm going to go into this materials. I've already made a few of these. I'm going to make, a, I've already made a few of these uh, sky image-based lighting, so you can see once I once you throw these guys in, it actually changes quite a bit. I'm going to actually turn on my uh, ting tool, start tracking, so you can see. So down below is our camera, up above is our working area, but you can see that how nice that is. So let's go and take that same one, and I'm going to take a much lower resolution version of that, and let's let it render up. And you see again, it's got a nice light. It's got a different kind of reflectivity to it. Um, uh, and you, I think you can actually go and add a reflection. Like if you want to, the higher one, we can go in here and add a reflection reflection map in here. The cube map. We need to go into our textures that we used to build that, and we can put that in there. So now we've got basically a high resolution reflection map, but we our background is not is not that way so that's kind of a nice thing too let's keep looking um and let's look at uh this apartment one i'm going to put it on the uh, up oops i'm going to make that back to skybox here so we're going to go to this apartment one and watch what it does to the colors so it changes completely again so what's happening is we're using these image-based lighting maps to actually re-render the scene in a very appropriately lit way right so you see this white box now is matching the white of this of this uh background area right or it should be if it's not you might want to go into this edit project settings player and go into the other settings and make sure this is set to linear not gamma so that's that's a key thing to to keep in mind so um so uh Let's talk a little bit about how you make these, right? So that's really the challenge. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go up into here, and uh, let's go back a bit. So if you type in HDRI map into the browser, you can get to a lot of different free HDRIs. And then I'm gonna, I go to this one. I like this one. And let's see. Let's download something interesting like, uh, let's see what do we have here that might be kind of fun. This Winter Forest one. Okay, so let's let it download. Okay, it downloaded. It was a zip file. I extracted it. Here's the files that we have in there. Um, these JPEGs are just really, these are just, uh, they just are previews of it. We don't want to do anything with those. Uh, but the ones we want is this, is are these, the HDR one, which is only 130, that's the, the smaller resolution, which is 130K, which is really good for gaming kinds of things. And if you're trying to do, uh, you know, like a VR kind of thing with real high resolution and you have a big enough system, this one's a 25 megabyte one. You might open this in Photoshop and scale it down. 
and to, to half that size would probably be just fine. Let's go ahead and do that uh, real quick. Okay, I got Photoshop open. I'm going to say open with Adobe Photoshop, and there we have it. So this is our EXR, and I want to basically, I'm going to say, so you can see image mode. You can see that we've got 32 bits channel. So I'm going to basically say image uh, size, and I'm going to make it 50% of that size, say OK, and I'll just hit save. I've got it zipped up somewhere, so there we go, that good. OK, so now you can see we've it's quite a bit quite a bit smaller, so that's good. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to take these, the smaller one, right? And I cut these. I'm going to go to my Unity project. I'm going to go to IBL, Assets, and these are textures. And I'm going to paste them right in there. And then let's go back. To Unity, there we go, and let's go ahead and look at our new textures that we just got in. So, go on down here, they are. So, first thing we need to do is we can take these textures and we go up and we just create them, set them to be cube maps. Apply, that'll take a little while, but it's the big one. This one, and we're gonna do the same thing with it, we're gonna make it a cube map and hit apply. That's a smaller one, it goes almost instantaneously. Then we're going to go over to our, I'm going to go into my materials folder and I'm going to scroll down. Or I'm going to right click and say uh, create a new material and I'm going to call it winter low. It means a low resolution. Okay, and I'll, I'll open that up and now I want to turn this into a skybox cube map. Okay, once I've got that, I can go to my textures and I can take my winter force low and just grab it. Wrong thing. There, that's what we want. Okay, we put it right there. And now we're done. And then I need to go and I'm going to basically go back to my materials. And there's my winter low material. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to go winter high. And I'll go back in here. And here I can just, I'll try a different way of doing it. I'll click on that. And there's my winter high. So now, as we recall, I just go up here. I can take my uh, materials, my winter high material, and drag it right in here, and let this thing re-render. And you see now we've got our nice chrome ball in the middle of the cold, cold <laughs> winter. So um, so let's talk about now how we use this to, to light a scene. Actually, before we do this, let's talk a little more about the PBR shader. So I, I went and downloaded the uh, PBS material uh, variety pack one and I'm gonna just drag a few of these on here and you'll see see what happens that's an asphalt shader uh, let's look at a brick shader you know so so you'll see that you know they they actually look very real uh, inside this this environment let's go and find something like a uh, oh let's try some a metal one so get the idea. Here's a wood one, some wooden ones. Now, one of the interesting things is that you may say, like, let's take, for instance, the, uh, let's go get the brick one. And, uh, and you may say, well, you know, I don't really like, that looks like it needs to be stretched a little more. And so if we're going to adjust that, what we do is we click on this object here, and we're going to go into the brick shader over here. And you can see we have tiling two one. I'm going to change this in the uh, uh, y direction, right? So I'm going to make this one a little bit higher. And now you can see that when I hit that three, it, it, it reset that, it, it changed that a little bit. So if you need to, to adjust the texture, you can use this tiling. Anyway, uh, let's while we're here, let's go back and look at the. Uh, uh, let's take a look at some more of the, you know, how some of these things react in different in different. Um, environments. You can see so how nicely this PBR stuff works. Uh, let's grab some uh, concrete there. That's not too good. Hey, that's better. It's a little better. So anyway, so you're starting to get the idea. Now, let's say that we have uh, let's create a new material. Um, actually, we have this chrome. I'm going to take this chrome and I'll put it on bottom here, right? So one of the things that we're going to see right off the bat is that, wow, we don't have any uh, any reflection 
on this at all. And uh, why is that? Well, that's because the reflection, the, the, the scene that we're creating only creates reflections in the objects, but it doesn't calculate reflections between objects. It only reflects on top of objects. So to do that, we have to go to the camera and we got to add a component and we add the component. Actually, let's, let's do this from the asset store. Okay, so we want to go to cinematic image effects. There it is. This cinematic image effects is is the uh, let's just maximize it. is the one that we want to we want to get. It's got a couple things. It's got ambient occlusion. It's got a really nice anti-aliasing model uh, and some other things. So anyway, this is this is what you want to download. And once you do that, you can go in here and just type in reflection. And you'll see that there's a uh, screen space reflections right there. So once we add that, we're uh, we're good to go. You can see the reflection in in the box. Now, if you don't see the reflection, you say, "Well, what what happened?" It's because you didn't have this rendering path to defer. It. If you have, it says you graphics thing, if you if you get here and, and you don't see anything, it's because on your camera you have to say deferred. And once you do that, you're going to see those reflections. Okay. So let's take this surface again. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to add some more ambient uh, shading in there. So I'm going to go in and uh, make this, even though it's metallic, I'm going to make it very unsmooth, right? And I'll change the color to something more like in this color, in this area right here. And so now there's a little bit of reflection you can see, but not a lot. But I do want to see, I want to get, I want to get this to be a little darker. So let's take, I'm, I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to make this rubber something dark um, and I want to start to see what I can do about getting a darker uh, uh, some dark shadows in here actually let's okay so right now we don't see any shadows at all well why is that well because one is our ambient source uh, I mean not our ambient source our ambient GI is needs to be set to baked and our ambient intensity up here is pretty high so I'm gonna turn that down of course we have to turn on ambient occlusion that always helps and let it bake it. I'm going to jack this up to about 60 since it's a really kind of a small scene right now. And we're still not getting much ambient occlusion. So this is a good example of understanding the material that you're on. So right now, you can still see it's a pretty reflective material, even though we have our material is set to uh, the smoothest level of 0.18. The farther down we go, even at zero, which I don't even think is a real metal, we're still going to have a problem. But if I take the metal, push it down, let's push it all the way down. So now we've got a, a non-metal surface. We're watching it bake, but once we see it bake, you'll start to see that ambient occlusion works really well then. It gets it gets going. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, uh, another thing that's uh, of interest will be how do I light this? Uh, how, how would I light this scene using uh, a directional light? So if I go in here, and I turn on a directional light. Okay, now I'm starting to get uh, I've kind of washed out my ambient occlusion, so I'm probably going to want to move this down to something like maybe 0.5 or something or 0.6 or 0.7. So we still have it. What I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to match, I'm trying to match this shadow with that shadow right there, the coloring and the size. So now the ambient occlusion's kicked in. You see, we got kind of close. Maybe a little bit harsh. Um, uh, I might want to go a little farther down, maybe 0.5 then, and let the again we're going to let this bake. Uh, I'm going to turn this on static, and I'm going to turn the baking on uh, this on bake also. So now we have we're going to let this that that actual shadow bake directly on there. There it is. Good. So. So that looks pretty good. Um, look down the bottom here is where we really need to be looking. Um, so I'll show a uh, couple more things. One, let's let's let's. I'm gonna turn off the sphere. Turn on this drone. This is a drone model that I've created a long time ago, and, and I'm gonna let this this bake for a while, but. Um, what I'd like to do is get a little more dramatic lighting in here. First of all, 
I don't really need this background to be shown in my camera. So I'm going to go to my camera and I'll, I'm going to basically say I'm going to want a solid color. So there. So that's a little better. I like that. I can also say I can make it black or white or whatever color I want to. Um, I can even sample colors from my existing scene. So I take that color from that scene. That way I've got a light that actually, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that color is already in the scene. So uh, this understand, you know, it kind of relates to what's going on. So um, let's zoom in. Now, I still don't particularly, I'm not crazy about this lighting. So I'm going to go into my directional light and turn it off. And I'm going to come under here under uh, game object and add a area light. And here's my area light and I'm going to move it up. Okay. So now I've got an area light right, right smack dab in the middle. And I'm going to punch the intensity up to about maybe three on this and see what it does. And you can see it's a little, little tight. I think I, I think I, I need to raise it just a little more and maybe scale it a little bit bigger as well. And you can start to see kind of a nice, has a nice, uh, nice effect. Um, I think I actually want to make it even bigger than that. So I'm going to scroll back and I'm going to go into our work, do this there. Okay. Make it a little larger. Okay, now I'm starting to get something that I really like. It's really lit that, that nicely, that, that, that white plane very nicely. So you're starting to get the idea that this is, a, this is you know, our, our lighting model for creating a, uh, a product shot. Now, shadow maps. Uh, unfortunately, I can't figure out quite yet how to do shadow maps. I'm going to try and dig into that a little more later. But for now, we're just going to have to hold off on the shadow, the whole shadow maps thing. Well, let's see. So, uh, shadow maps are where we have one background, like we saw in key shot earlier, that actually the shadow just goes directly on the background. For instance, if I turn off my cube here, you see that shadow does not go down on that ground. So, uh, that's why I put a cube right up at the front, right like, like this. That's that's the purpose of that. So. Anyway, I hope this uh, was helpful for you. This is, again, how to do some image-based lighting and some and, and uh, set up uh, for product uh, inside of uh, inside of Unity. And I think it does a pretty good job. We're gonna I'm gonna do some more examples of building sets also, and we'll talk about that later as we do that. Thanks. Bye.